Tonight on Newslink Indiana, Halloween is just hours away. But the weather is playing a nasty trick, forcing kids big and small to wait for their treats. Plus, a scary situation in an off-campus neighborhood. We have the latest on the investigation into an online deal gone wrong. All that plus a look at a chance of severe storms. Newslink Indiana starts right now. Live from Ball State University, news for the campus community and all of Delaware County. This is Newslink Indiana. In less than a week, voters will head to the polls to determine the future of school buses for the Muncie Community Schools. Good evening, I'm Payne Horning. And I'm Jennifer Fike. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we are joined by the Muncie Community Schools Chief Financial Officer, Mark Burkhart, who will help answer some questions regarding the referendum. Mr. Burkhart, some might call what the Muncie schools are in right now a financial crisis. How did we get here? In 2009, the General Assembly of Indiana established property tax caps. Those caps, as those have been implemented over those last uh, five years, actually, have caused us to lose 33, 43, and now next year, 89% of our revenue in the transportation fund. We cannot operate yellow school buses with just 11% of our budget. Now, are there any other remedies besides the referendum for school busing? Could you cut staff, cut administration, mm -hmm. or consolidate schools? Each of our funds is dedicated. The transportation fund has a, a dedicated purpose. All of our other five funds have dedicated purposes. We cannot uh, move money around arbitrarily and unilaterally between those funds. Um, so no, there, there's no place else for us to cut to establish funding for transportation. Now, what if the referendum does not pass? Some naysayers say that regardless of whether or not taxes are increased, busing services will continue. Is there any truth behind that? In order for bus service to continue absent a positive result from the referendum, uh, it would take some kind of external intervention. By external, I mean the Indiana General Assembly could uh, change the tax structure in some way to allow for more funding for transportation. Uh, the local uh, city council could pass a, a local option income tax, which would be used to support uh, tax, uh, taxes for all units of government locally. That's, that's another option. Uh, neither of those uh, seem feasible at this time. Uh, the General Assembly that will meet uh, in uh, this coming spring is the same General Assembly that met last spring, and they didn't provide any relief, so I don't see that as an option. The Chief Financial Off Officer for the Muncie Community Schools, Mark Burkhart. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Newslink Indiana reached out to the referendum opposition, but they were unavailable for comment. And now a story that we first brought to you as breaking news last night. Muncie police are still investigating after shots were fired about three quarters of a mile off campus. This is a video from the scene. According to police, two people arranged online to meet on the corner of University and Reserve to sell personal property. According to an email sent to students, the deal turned into an armed robbery and the victim shot into the air. The suspect, who also had a gun, ran from the area. Police are reminding you to be cautious of people you meet online. And crimes like this are just another reason why it's important to stay safe, especially with Halloween just around the corner. Now, to help keep you safe, the Delaware County Sheriff's Office has a website that you may want to check if you're headed out. iCrime Watch pinpoints the criminal offenders who live near you. Newslink Indiana's Rachel Fagan has the story. Delaware County Sheriff Department stated on their community awareness program that an estimated 80% of all addresses have at least one sex offender living within a mile of their home. As kids, adults, and college students are choosing their costumes and desired trick-or-treat destination, Delaware Sheriff's Office has posted strategies and tools in effort to keep you safe and aware this Halloween season iCrime Watch generates a virtual map of all offenders located in a two-mile radius of the address search. Andrew Fry, communications major, said this about the website. It's a great tool to use, especially for parents who are planning to go trick-or-treating with their kids. 
Brooke Nicoletti, a public relations student at Ball State, said she regularly checks the offender website as a safety precaution. I'd say my biggest fear when having my little brother or any kids going door to door when, when trick or treating on Halloween is probably you don't know whose door you're walking up to a lot of the time. Some of the sheriff's safety tips include using makeup instead of a mask and checking all your Halloween candy when you get home. In Muncie, Rachel Fagan, Newsland, Indiana. And speaking of trick-or-treating, just a reminder, several communities nearby are changing or moving their trick-or-treat hours due to the threat of storms. Muncie's trick-or-treat hours are being moved to Friday night from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Yorktown and Daleville are also moving their hours to Friday, again from 5 until 8. Anderson will be holding two trick-or-treat hours on Thursday and Friday from 5 until 8. Even the governor is taking part in the Halloween festivities this year. Mike Pence and First Lady Karen Pence will be greeting trick-or-treaters as athletic stars. The governor will be dressed in a Colts uniform, and the First Lady will be dressed as an Indiana fever player. They'll be handing out candy from the governor's mansion. Halloween is tomorrow, and with trick-or-treating moved to Friday night, you may have been wondering why so many children were lurking around campus Tuesday night. The residence halls actually hold a special Halloween event open to Delaware County families every year. Newslink Indiana's Ashley Lohman has the story. Hundreds of little witches, monsters, and even superheroes roam the halls of the Neuer Complex Tuesday evening. Neuer was just one of several residence halls participating in an annual campus-wide trick-or-treating event dubbed Spookapalooza by Neuer Hall Council. Abby Parado, Neuer Hall Council Vice President, says the event is planned with the community in mind. Something Ball State normally, you know, really supports and tries to get us to do is work with the Muncie community. So and I feel like this is a really good way for Hall Councils to do that. Hall Council members tried to make the event as enjoyable as possible for everyone participating. In order to make things more interesting and fun for trick-or-treaters, each floor decorated their hall walls according to different themes. A new activity was added to the event this year, which Parado volunteered to run with Neuer Hall Council Super Committee Chair Josh Bobeck. I ran the What's in the Bowl uh, activity where kids would come and they would feel different things in the bowl and we had things that represented guts and blood and brains, ears and witches' noses. Adults tried their hand at it too. I was kind of curious as to what exactly how they were going to make it and what was going to be in the boxes and I got to play with it. An estimated total of 350 children from several different Delaware County schools attended the event this year. Members of Neuer Hall Council hope to incorporate the What's in the Bowl activity again next year. Well, although the trick-or-treaters won't be out on Thursday now, those storms are still expected to arrive on All Hallows Eve. Well, Payne, somebody may call it the calm before the spook. Well, in order to find out what we're anticipating tomorrow as well as tonight, here's Alex Wojcikowski, our forecaster. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the weather is definitely playing more tricks and is treating us here in east central Indiana. However, what we are being treated to are some mild temperatures at this hour. 60 degrees currently with a south wind at 9 miles per hour. Dew point is at 59 degrees, indicating that there is plenty more moisture ahead this way. I expect this temperature to go up a couple of degrees in the next couple of hours as there is a warm front approaching uh, Muncie as we speak. We already hit a high of 62 degrees, but we will see if we, add, we could add a couple more ticks to the thermometer. But with this milder air comes the threat for showers and thunderstorms. We already see some showers and thunderstorms entering northwestern portions of Indiana with plenty more rain stretching on down points west and to the south. I expect those showers to arrive here later on into the night and especially tomorrow, making it for a very soggy Halloween. I will time out the heaviest rain coming up tomorrow and we will also uh, determine whether or not we can experience any severe weather and when temperatures will cool down once the system moves through. Back to you guys. Well, it's no secret that college students are often short on cash, me included, Jennifer. But one student has found a way to pay the bills without searching through the couch cushions. Plus, some students have an extra expense pain to worry about, daycare. Coming up, we'll introduce you to some students who deal with that on a daily basis. This is Newslink Indiana.
there are many uh, students on Ball State's campus who are double majoring in parenting. Along with the stresses of schoolwork, these students must focus on raising their family. And for most, child care comes at a high price. Bree Kirkham has the story. For student parents, making sure that their children are taken care of during the day is often top priority. And for sophomore Sydney Curit, it is a task that cannot be taken lightly. Um, the biggest issue is definitely the cost of child care because um, it's $800 a month generally for child care, which is more than my rent. Ball State's Child Study Center serves as a daycare for many student and faculty children. Child Center worker Megan Schufelt explains the benefits that they provide. And child care is quite expensive, especially if you are going uh, full time. And we do try to offer decent rates, but um, it can be very difficult for families to come up with that payment every month. So. Initially, I was actually going to go with the Ball State Daycare because I heard a lot of good things about how they work with children and how a lot of the children here get developmental tests that other children aren't privy to. Um, the thing is, is that the child care was too sporadic for me. And so the biggest uh, factor uh, playing into my decision to choose my daycare was A, they um, charge their rates based on your income. The Institute for Women's Policy Research explains that most college students in the U.S. are considered non-traditional. And 27% of community college students are parents. From Newslink, Indiana Muncie, I'm Bree Kirkham. All college students are looking for a way to make that extra dollar. Hannah Carlock sat down with one college student who has her own unique way of making money while helping out her peers. All right, my name is Megan Graybosch. I'm making a paddle for one of my friends who's in a sorority. Um, sometimes people just ask me to make things for them, like birthday cards or posters or paddles. And I'm not in a sorority, so this is the perfect opportunity to make a paddle um, because it's always something I've wanted to do. Um, I started scrapbooking in middle school and high school and so whenever I needed like a birthday card or anything like that, I decided to make my own because it's cheaper and you can personalize it more. Um, and then from there, I just kind of started making all of my own decorative things because it's cheaper and I can do what I want. Um, I get inspiration from Pinterest or just like whatever people say they want me to do. Um, usually if I mess up, I find a way to fix it or make it look like I meant to do it that way. Um, sometimes, like there have been times, I was making a Christmas gift for my sister last year and I just really didn't like the way that it turned out so I scrapped it and started completely over. Um, I don't really like to do that because obviously I spend money to buy the supplies and whatnot. There is elementary education and I think that my creativity will help with that because I'll be able to make things for my students. Also I feel like with me creating my own things um, it'll role model to them that you don't always have to buy what you need. You can usually make it yourself. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> With the holiday season right around the corner, now might be a good time to put your own spin on crea creativity, all while saving money. Now time for a look at headlines from around the area on Ball State Source for Online News, The Daily. I'm Madeline Yost. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is the last show ever for a select few students here at Ball State. Check out The Daily to see how they feel about their last time on stage. Counseling Center Coordinator Jay Zimmerman urges people to email jo Joanne Gora about their opinion on the proposed HJR6 bill. If the HJR6 bill is passed, then constitutionally, marriage will be defined as between one man and one woman in the state of Indiana. Read the Daily to find out other universities' views as well. For these stories and more from Newslink, WCRD, Sports, Sports Links, Ball Bearings, and The Daily News, go to bsudaily.com. If storms give you the spooks, this Halloween is sure to be a scary one. Absolutely, and there are no treats from the weather this year. We've got a chance of severe storms on Halloween. This is Newslink Indiana. Well, we already know trick-or-treating has been moved to Friday due to the severe weather pain. But if I know my peers, Jennifer, they'll be out regardless of the weather in full costume. So, Alex, what can they expect as they're out and about on Thursday? 
Well, unfortunately, they're going to be dealing with some pretty heavy showers and thunderstorms that will be moving through the area sometime tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. But it was uh, smart on Muncie's part to postpone trick-or-treating hours from Thursday to Friday. I'm sure candy and kids on the school night doesn't really go so well. But right now we're enjoying some pretty mild temperatures right here in the state of Indiana. But back into the plains, we have some much cooler air. And that, unfortunately, is on its way once again here to portions of central Indiana. 60 degrees is where we sit right now in Muncie. 59 at Indianapolis. Much milder and warmer as you head down to the uh, south and east. Earlier this evening, Evansville actually recorded a temperature of 74 degrees. So it gives us a good idea of warm air that's uh, coming in. And this warm front that's currently lifting will make its way through. We will see if we can add a couple of degrees to our temperatures. We already have a high of 62 today. But with it is coming some showers and thunderstorms. Th those will make their way through here later on this evening. And unfortunately, will last all day tomorrow and tomorrow night, making for a very soggy Halloween. By 11 o'clock tonight, these showers and thunderstorms are already making its way into northwest Indiana will be on its doorstep here in central Indiana. As you wake up tomorrow morning, unfortunately, you're going to grab those umbrellas as you have the door to school or work. And heading into tomorrow afternoon, we expect the peak of the uh, weather to arrive. We, un we fortunately won't be expecting anything severe. However, we, we will be uh, experiencing some pretty gusty winds in excess of 40 miles per hour, as well as some heavy rain. Uh, it's worth mentioning so far for the year, we are running about two and a half inches under what we should be for this time of year. We're about 31, uh, we've already had a close to 32 inches of rainfall. And if with the uh, rainfall I'm expecting around uh, one inch and where the heavier showers and thunderstorms fall, we could be dealing with over two inches of rain and it'll be the first time since the middle of July where we have been above normal in terms of precipitation. But by tomorrow night, this system is almost out of here except for a couple of lingering showers. But beyond this system is some cooler air that will make its way in here for portions of Friday and your Saturday forecast as well. Tonight, rain arrives with th thunderstorms possible, a low of 62 degrees. Those winds will be out of the south-southwest at 9 to 15 miles per hour, but they will pick up by tomorrow. South winds 20 to 25 miles per hour with those thunderstorms, a high of 66 degrees. Now your trick-or-treat forecast for those kids out there will be in the mid to upper 50s by 5 o'clock, ending at 8 o'clock with cloudy skies and a temperature of 50 degrees heading into your seven day. After those showers and thunderstorms move through on Thursday, we have those morning rain showers on Friday. Unfortunately, more rain is expected on Saturday with a high temperature of 49 degrees, turning sunny once again for the early part of next week. Well, it seems like there really isn't going to be any calm to this storm. Uh, there will be. As soon as we get through the rain on Friday morning, it should be A-OK -okay for trick-or-treating. Well, Ball State basketball is officially underway. The women's basketball team kicked off their season tonight at Worthen Arena. When we come back, Andy Wright will recap the game with highlights in addition to a live report from Worthen. Stay tuned. Newslink Indiana Sports is next. This is Newslink Indiana. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Andy Wright with your Newslink Sports. And Ball State basketball is back underway as the women's team saw action tonight at Worthen Arena against Oakland City University. They had a rather good time here at Worthen Arena as you see Nally Fontaine in her sophomore season coming up in the starting lineups. She had four points early for the Cardinals and actually had 12 points at the half. Good start for the sophomore forward for Ball State. Ball State really were cruising throughout the game and here's Brandy Woody on the assist to freshman center Number 14, Rene, the freshman center, coming in, getting some playing time early for the Cardinals. She had eight points in the first half. Good sign for the freshman and for the Ball State Cardinals. Brady Silly and the Cardinals really dominated this game. They led 48 and 25 at the first half, and they ended up leading as much as 88 to 47 with less than eight minutes to go, with the final being in the triple digits. The Cardinals will evidently, definitely enjoy this win today as they look to go and continue their season success later next month. Now the Cardinals have won their first game and while it won't count in the record books, it still was a good start for their season. Now we have Peter Hood live on the scene with a report at Worthen Arena. Thanks Andy. Well the Cardinals were a little sluggish early on tonight. They were tied at six with Oakland City heading to the first media timeout but an 8-0 run out of that timeout set the tone for the rest of the night. The Cardinals went on to roll 109 to 58. 
Natalie Fontaine, the sophomore, set the tone. 24 points and 7 rebounds to lead the Cardinals. Her and Renee Bennett were dominant down low. They led the Cardinals to out-rebounding Oakland City 53-27 to on the night. The Cardinals had 22 offensive rebounds. And get this, they outscored Oakland City 64-4 to in points in the paint. So a dominant night for the Ball State. Big women down low. Jill Morrison, the, fr the freshman, had 17 points and shot the ball very well as well. 7, 11, 7 of 11 from the field for Morrison and shot the ball very well from deep. She also had four steals. The Cardinals as a team forced 23 turnovers in all and scored 31 points off of those turnovers. So the Cardinals were great in transition. They were great down low. And an all-around dominant performance for Coach Brady Sally and his Cardinals as they prepare for the regular season. Reporting live from Worthen Arena, Peter Hood, Newslink, Indiana. Thanks a lot, Peter. And in addition to basketball at Ball State, we have the Indiana Pacers. They opened up their NBA regular season yesterday with a win over former IU star Oladipo, Victor Oladipo, and they beat the Magic 97-87. And tonight, they're playing the New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans, I should say. They're actually trailing 50-36. to 36. And another important game that I'm sure you all are keeping track of, Boston is leading St. Louis 3 to nothing in the bottom of the fourth inning. If Boston wins this game, they win the World Series. So big night if you're a sports fan in general. All right. Well, thank you very much, Andy. Well, the man behind the phrase, come on down, is coming back. Find out why Bob Barker is making an appearance on The Price is Right. And we've got a video of a flash mob you will want, you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. Halloween came a day early in the nation's capital today. Take a look at this. A flash mob of mini zombies took to the streets. They're from a D.C. elementary school, and they're all dressed up like ghouls from Michael Jackson's thriller. And, and they performed in front of D.C.'s old office uh, pavilion. So... An exciting day in D.C. Halloween-wise. Exactly, and what does our week look like for weather? Well, the weather would be much better in D.C. than it will be here. Lots of rain and, unfortunately, no trick-or-treating tomorrow night, but Friday looks good enough for Payne to go out and trick-or-treat some. <laughs> I will be out, and I will be trick-or-treating, but <laughs> it seems like the weather will be good enough Sunday for everybody to go out to the haunted forest then. Absolutely. Plenty of sunshine. Well, that's fantastic. Well, and uh, Jennifer, what's your costume for Halloween? Well, I hate to tell you this, I am not dressing up this year. I'm actually spending some time um, at the Autism Awareness Program okay. that's going to be on Saturday. So I'm sorry, folks, no dressing up for this girl, but a good cause. Well, I will be an Indiana celebrity, Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. So I'm excited to dress up as Nick Offerman. But we thank you for joining us. And, uh, uh, and The Price is Right uh, is I mean, they've got Bob Barker again. This exactly. Is so the price is right. Wants you to come right on <laughs> so down excited. for Bob Barker's birthday show. Barker's returning to the Price is Right to celebrate his 90th birthday. He made an appearance on a pre-taped birthday show, which will air December 12th. Barker hosted the game show for 35 years before retiring in 2007. Drew Carey then took his place. He'll be honored the week entire. The entire week with pet adoptions on the show something barker used to do on the program barker has appeared on the show just one other time since he retired the mark to mark the release of his memoir what? and thank you so much for joining us tonight on newslink indiana please be sure to watch us tomorrow night at nine and in honor of bob barker spay or neuter your cats <laughs> have a good night